All right, hello everybody. Welcome to another one-off video. This is uh, another world tour. Uh, so recently I did a tour of my main world, or that's what I called it. It was my main world. And now I'm going to do a tour of what I called my first world. And there's a bit of a story behind this, which I will talk about. Uh, this is the first world I ever generated after I bought the game. Uh, this very seed, in this very place I stood. Um, so yeah, this was where it all began for me uh, in Minecraft. I had played the demo, me and Domo played the demo for, I know it was quite a long time, could have been up to nine months before we actually bought the game. Um, oh crumbs, I just started walking there for no reason. Um, yeah, we played the demo for nine months uh, or so before we uh, actually bought the game. And after we bought the game, this was the first world I generated. And as you can see, uh, got a village up there. Uh, how do you zoom? Yep, control is zoom. Um, but yeah, this is. I just, uh, I, re I just wanted to show what uh, what it was like, what the world was like before I came in and messed it up. <laughs> um, I do have a few things I want to say about it at this time. Firstly, my first ever death in the, this world occurred around about here. There was an Enderman standing there, and I looked at him, and uh, he came after me and killed me. Another thing I want to say is I was going away for two weeks uh, right after we bought the game so I could only play it for like five minutes. <laughs> so I was away for two weeks knowing that I was an owner of a Minecraft account but I couldn't play. <laughs> so uh, that was that was cool. But I, I did get at least a wee, wee bit of a chance to see it before I went. Um, and I think Domo played it for, for, for the, the time I was away. Uh, that's probably what burnt him out to be honest. <laughs> no. Um... Uh, but yeah, this world was very strange for me because um, in the five minutes that I had playing this, the only thing I really did was dismantle the village uh, over there. Uh, it, it was just, I just completely tore it apart because villages at the time, this was 1.2.5, as you can see, top left corner. Um, it was the most pointless, villages were the most pointless thing ever because villagers did nothing. There was something in the blacksmiths, as you can see, there's a blacksmith right over there. Um, but apart from that, villages just gave me resources. The final thing I want to say is I did play this world um, and it became much like my main world. I didn't do that much in it but it became a lot like my main world in that builds were just basically out of cobble and things didn't look that good and I had a house that was a box. Then I stopped it and played my main world for six to nine months or whatever. Then I came back to this world and I destroyed everything that I'd done. I got rid of all my resources or at least I put them in a chest for later and I started this world afresh. Like, it was the same world, if you get me, but I was doing, I did things differently. It's kind of hard to explain, but uh, basically this world had two phases. Phase one was at the start, and then phase two came like a year later when I got rid of all my builds, got rid of all the resources I had, and uh, just started afresh. Although obviously there was no village because that had already been taken down in phase one. Um, it's hard to explain. I pro will probably never explain it well, but that is that is what happened. So, oops. So yeah, let's now move on to the the real world. All right, and we are now in the present. This is the present world. Um, it is an inactive world, but this is nonetheless the present world. So, a few features to point out from the last clip. That's where the village was, and of course, as I mentioned, I tore it down, so it is no longer there. Uh, we are in a forest biome, if you will remember, that's where the spawn is, and this is indeed where the spawn is, just around about here. Um, as, as you can see, a lot has changed, so I'm just going to, I guess, similar with the main world tour, I'm just going to go through and show off everything, uh, and yeah, hopefully it will go well. So over here we've got uh, my main kind of base area. It's nothing special. I've got a bit of a hobbit hole here, just where I kind of have my bed and a few chests to keep stuff in and ender chests and that. It's, it's. I wouldn't say it's an amazing build. It's just a hole in the ground, really, but it does the job. Uh, now this is my storage room, and I learnt from my main world where um, I learnt from my main world what made a bad storage room, and so I upgraded it in this world to being slightly better than that. Uh, so this is how I do it. Basically in these chests up here we have items you can craft. So for example cyan dye you can craft. Um, 
mostly cobble you technically can't craft, but stone bricks you can. Um, arrows you can craft, loads of arrows. Tools you can craft. Um, stairs you can craft. But then if we head down, we come to the storage room of things you can't craft. So lily pads you can't craft, netherrack you cannot craft, sand you cannot craft. So Generally, I know where to look if I'm looking for something. So, for example, if I'm looking for something you can't craft, I come down here. If I'm looking for something you can craft, I go up there. Quite simple, really. And this is just like overflow storage. Look how much coal I had but in this world. It's really insane. I had a an x-ray machine under this, but after that got patched in 1.7.2, I just changed it to an ender chest. Um... So then in here we've got uh, an enchanting room, nothing special, just bookshelves and the table and you use torches obviously to uh, block the, the shelves. And uh, in here just a simple brewing room. None of the stuff is here anymore because I moved it elsewhere. Um, oh, but there are some pots here. I'm going to take some speed I think just in case. Might be useful. Uh, and I also just want to point out that this jump would not be possible without the aid of a beacon, although you can't actually see the beacon uh, effects, but as you'll notice I'm fast going around, my FOV is higher. It's not actually, but it's just because of the speed which makes the FOV higher. And the jump boost is what enables us to get that, make that jump, which would otherwise be impossible. There's the beacons up there. Um, got some jungle trees kicking around, which is pretty cool. Um, this is a flower farm which I made. You, um, I was inspired to make by Etho. Uh, I didn't use it that much, but it's it's a fairly decent design. Um, you just bore me all the grass and then place a water source on the underside of that block, and it harvests all the seeds and flowers. It's pretty cool. This goes down to the mob system, uh, both mob systems. Oh, sorry, the mob system and the slime farm. Uh, there's no mobs aren't enabled because I got on peaceful, but as you can see, it's standard design to the ones that I normally do. It's pretty good. And if we go along here, slime farm. Um, it's not as nice looking as some of my other slime farms, but whatever. As you can see, it's got the lava blades in there to break the slime down before they drown. Um, this design probably doesn't work in 1.8 because slime can now swim. So if I was to play this world again, I would have to alter that. We've got a bridge here that crosses to a man-made island in the middle of the river. Man-made because I dug out the far section of water, which you mm, you might be able to tell that it's man-made. I guess it's kind of straight at that point. Um, but yeah, a bit of an island here. I kept animals here for the longest time, but I took them off eventually. Not sure what I'm going to do with it. Or, <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it when I was playing the world. Here we've got a uh, zombie spawner, uh, which I converted into a zombie XP farm, as you can see. And we've got the XP option here, so if it's down, no XP. If it's up, XP. That's glitched, by the way. There we go. Um, also, I just want to point out, similar to my last tour, I, I'm not really big on... on uh, incinerators but for some reason I had one probably because I used to get a ton of rotten flesh. In the background there you can probably see stone bricks that is the entrance to a spider xp farm, a cave spider xp farm. Uh, so I would go and show you that as well but it's it's not really that too much different from the, the zombie farm although it uses a, gr a crusher to get them down to one heart uh, and it takes it's like deep down so it would take me ages to get back up. If we work our way along the coast here, or riverbank I guess, we've got a snow farm in there. Don't need to show that because it's just like every other snow farm in existence. Um, over here we've got... Uh, that's a village, if you didn't know. <laughs> that's where I um, get my villagers from, although I never actually used it for anything. But yeah, basically breed villagers in there. I collect them from underground. As you can see, there's a rail track down there. And I... Um, that's the entrance to the zombie villager purifier thing. 
Um, it's actually quite ironic because I, I remember the exact day I was building this. It was May of 20, oh, it would have been 2013. Um, because I was listening to this Church of Scotland General Assembly, <laughs> the Barrier Act being explained, and <laughs> I was, well, yes, you can tell I was very interested at listening to that. Uh, but yeah, I just it's just funny how I remember the time and place I was when I was building that because of what I was listening to while I was building it. Um, that leads to a squid farm. Uh, oops, it's not as big as the one in James's Minecraft journal, but as you can see, it's similar design. It's got the lighting around, and the squid should swim to the lights, get stuck in a downward flow, and end up falling to their death. And that gives us the ink sacks. Bit of a sugarcane farm here. It's pretty, pretty nice. Uh, along with a cactus farm, it's just in here. Uh, I very rarely use this, and in fact, I don't think I've even, I even emptied it at all. Like during my the time of playing this world, which spanned a good would have spanned about ooh, a year maybe, maybe over a year, year and a half, I don't know. Um bunch of farms here. They're not automated, but hey ho. They provide basic resources. That takes us to a mine, just a standard mine shaft that I dug out. I also fight withers down there. Uh, but I probably won't show that either because it's pretty boring. No idea why I needed a cobble generator in survival minecraft but hey ho it's nice to have one anyway and if we continue our way around we come to a chicken farm uh, it's in a way similar to actually no it's quite different I designed this myself I didn't get any inspiration from anyone else from it you can tell because it's very clunky and inefficient uh, but if you activate this lever if one activates that lever you will be able to see that loads of water streams activate and that drives the chickens to that area there just below the piston and then if we go down here you can see the chickens end up here so I'm just going to shut that off yep and kill a chicken and you grab a looting sword hold that in your hand and press a button that kills all the chickens gives us their meat I'm not actually sure if it works or not, but, like, as in the looting 3 effect, I'm not sure if that works, but, hey ho, <laughs> it's there just in case it does. So that's the main base area, I guess, with all the farms and that that are attached to it, and I'm just going to show off the village that I built here. Um, as you can see, this is the spawn area, we've got a chicken shack here, which has a lot of chicken in it. Uh, and this is provided from the chicken farm, which is just down here, down the trail track. You can hear the chickens. And there it is with the storage minecart to deliver the chickens. Just a weird wee thing I wanted to do. It's pretty cool. Um, so this is my house. I had to build another one, literally 50 blocks from my <laughs> my main house. Um, but I just, you know, I wanted a property in the village, so that's why I created this. Ah, uh, look at this. Why did I have to put a light under this, this ender chest? Due to the fact the ender chest gives off light anyway, but uh, whatever. We've got stables over here. Ah, I think this looks decent. Um, you'll notice that in comparison to my main world, uh, a lot of these builds do have more than one uh, block use in them. And although they're not brilliant, they are of a slightly better quality than the... Um, the, the buildings my main world so I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with the improvement I made in this world if you go down here this takes you to the ravine that I showed in the first clip where I died to the enderman this is a flower stall place thing storage yeah this is where I store flowers just because why not it's pretty cool um, I like the design I chose for the the top to make it kind of look like a marketplace uh, this is an aquarium made out of quartz and various other blocks. This was before lapis was used for enchanting, by the way, so just in case you thought I was crazy. <laughs> um, there is a squid in there with a name tag. Yep, there he is over there. I named him um, Henry. And we've also got like fishing rods here, so if I was going to go fishing, then this is where I would do it. So right next door to the aquarium is Smithy's Smithy. And it's a smaller smelting station similar to the one that I've got in James's Minecraft journal but like I said it's not it's it is a lot smaller um, but it works does its job this is the happy haggis it's a bar slash inn slash hotel thing 
We've got drinks there, we've got tables and seats, and then up here has got the bedrooms, so yeah. Nice view of the smithy. That's actually a terrible view, come to think of it, but whatever. But yeah, I quite like this build. Pretty nice. I like the lighting. Lighting's cool as well. Uh, if you go over here, we've got a museum, which has stuff about Minecraft in it. I'm not entirely sure what my plans were with this, although I do want to do something like this in James's Minecraft journal. Uh, we've got all colours of glass, clay and wool in a traditional Vex style complete the monument. Monument. <laughs> um, got every record here with jukeboxes. We've got all pre-1.8 villagers, although I never actually got into 1.8 in this world because mobs not spawning glitch is what kind of put me off working here. Um, got map of spawn, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, I, I like I said, I want to do something like this in James's Minecraft journal. I'll probably add to it and just keep expanding it. Here is the town hall. Um, it's it's pretty cool. Um, there's not actually any purpose to it, it's just a building. <laughs> it's not like the one on the RSG server where we actually have meetings and that, but whatever. I'm not sure... I can't. Af I didn't copy Leon with the design because I built this before RSG, so I cannot remember for the, for the life of me like what inspired me to make it that shape. We've got a church up there, and we've got a statue of a wolf there, and a dam with uh, a river running through it. And then we come to the canal, uh, which connects two rivers, I believe. Uh, it's a pretty average canal, but that's okay. Um, wheat farm, and there's also a tatty farm and a carrot farm. Uh, there's various other farms around here. I don't want to show, spend time showing them all. There's animal farms, pumpkin farms down there. It's, it's not that special. Not worth showing, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. This is the, brewing, the new brewing area. So this is where I moved all the recipe stuff to, the ingredients, that's what I should say. We've got um, the brewing stands in the middle, we can fit every potion in the area, which is quite good. And I was going to make like a, uh, a track going from here back to base so I could deliver the pots, but never got around to that. This is an overflow storage room which um, contains like lots of junk items like dirt, uh, rotten flesh, bones, things that I you know, generally build up and never find storage for. This was the purpose of this building here and I actually quite like it. The stone brick, or not stone brick, the regular brick and the stone slabs go surprisingly well in my opinion. This is similar to what I did in my main world. It's a um, it's a mob farm, but it can also double up as a record farm. Um, I did this differently to the one in my... Oh no, actually I did it the same because there's a skelly spawner just under here. Um, if the mobs fall straight down, they'll just die instantly. Or I can use it for XP. But uh, if I pull a lever, then the mobs will, uh, mo will end up moving along this channel here. They'll fall. The non-creepers will die to sunlight, and then the creepers will be left, and then a skeleton will come and shoot the creepers, and give me records. If we go down here real quick, that was an AFK spot up there, by the way. If we go down here, uh, where is it? There's a place where I have records to prove it. Yeah, tons of records. So yeah, it was it worked well, and the skelly farms just behind. Oh, I can't see it for some reason. Oh, do you know why? Because if you remember my main world, I'd what I'd the whole spawner uh, active, whereas here I've only got one spot active. I should also point out that this world was generated at a time when um, this was generated in 1.2.5, and the world was less um, less hills spawned in other biomes. So I mean, if you look over there, you can see there's extreme hills. Um, but as you can see in this desert, there's no like desert hills or anything like that. See extreme hills over there, but this desert is pretty fat, flat. The plains was pretty flat over there. And this, this was before different biome variants came out, like desert hills, jungle hills, things like that. So I find that kind of, find that kind of cool. It's, it's pretty pretty interesting spot of history there. 
that's a barn by the way I forgot to mention it's where all the produce from these farms uh, gets collected I completely forgot to mention about uh, the tree farm it can it contains the original four types of tree uh, oak birch jungle and spruce and you get to it through this door uh, got another portal to the right and a mushroom farm to the left and there's just a simple elevator that takes you up to the tree farm so yeah simple but effective I just want to point out um, for this next part of the tour we're going to take a trip along a road um, so this is the village the spawn area and there, this is something I've wanted to do in James's Minecraft journal uh, and that is build long distance roads now I'm not sure about this style I'm not a fan of it I think it looks alright but it could be improved to a, a certain extent um, but yeah, this is basically a road and it goes to uh, the city that I was going to build in this world. This was take two of the project that I was going to do in my main world. But as you saw, I gave up. And I'll show you how this one turned out. Uh, so yeah, let's... I'll take you along this road and we shall see what uh, where it leads. Just want to point out that this is like a wee kind of house that's halfway between the main village and this our next destination. Uh, we've got a couple of horses there in case this one gets tired. <laughs> um, a wee bit of a house here just to stay in uh, if it turns night. Uh, as you can see by our coordinates, we are well. It, the main village is not exactly at zero zero, but we have gone quite a distance and we've still got quite a long way to go, so uh, let's keep going. And here we are. Uh, this is the city. Um, yes, what city? <laughs> Um, I didn't actually do as much on this one as I did in my main world. Like, as you can see, the walls are, I would say, slightly less complete. They're not any less uglier, unfortunately. They're, in fact, they're more uglier, in my opinion. Um, one thing I did do, uh, my render distance is at 8. I did build a bit of a castle here. I actually don't mind it as much. Um, it's kind of like built on several layers. As you can see, I've got a lot of stone here, and there's like something at the top. Uh, it's kind of like a castle room, throne room, something like that at the top. Similar, this I guess this is what kind of inspired me to do the one on the server, or like this design inspired me because it's similar to the one on the server. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's we did that. We built the wall. I think I guess the reason I didn't do this as much was because the wall was going to be harder to get to do because those hills and that in the way, and the area I chosen was so 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 big compared to the one in James's Minecraft journal which isn't too too big um, but yeah this is uh, this is the city I also have a wee house here just to help with the production uh, of the city which is good just want to point out of the amount of resources I got here like that is insane I did so much speed mining here jeez look at that I need something like this in um, <laughs> James's Minecraft journal Look at that, so many resources. One thing I forgot to mention was here, uh, in the ice biome next to the road that goes to the city, uh, I have my ice farm. Um, because I wanted one that was convenient. And I was actually going to build a nice village. You might have noticed in the clip where I went along the road, the, it kind of like stopped and then started again. I was going to build an ice village there, but I never got around to it. Hopefully that can be something to, that's something to be done. Uh, in James's Minecraft journal. Now we are in the nether. Um, we're in the nether hub. This is something I never built in uh, my main world, but I decided to build something here. You remember in the first clip of this video that I said everything I did, like I started this world, like when I first got the game, but then I went away from it, and then when I came back to it, I destroyed everything I'd built the first take and got rid of all my resources and started afresh. Well, I destroyed everything except for this. This remains the last thing 
in this world that I built when I first got the game. This castle fortress thing. I'm trying to find a good angle to show it at. Yeah, this kind of castle thing is the the, the first thing is one is the earliest surviving thing I built in Minecraft. Um, it's and also I think I, I guess I built that wall to protect myself from ghasts. Um, I actually did it up though, so it's not exactly the way it was. Um, but this is also the first portal I generated in the Nether, <laughs> and it was quite funny because I like there was a portal bug, so I had the portal in my base, went through it, came back out, and it generated somewhere in the desert. And a creeper must have got stuck in it, because then when I, ca I came back through, there was a creeper there, and it blew up, and blew a massive hole in the floor, and took out the portal, which was kind of funny. But, um, yeah, so that was Early's Nether Portal. I actually quite like this build, come to think of it, even though it's all cobble, and f kind of flat. The bit hanging down here was just simply a nether base, where I have things like brewing, storage, furnaces generally things you would find in a base um, so it's it's pretty cool uh, I just thought I'd make that just for the, the heck of it obviously the main reason why we're in the nether is to travel to places quickly um, so that's where the second stronghold is that's where the third stronghold is yeah I found all three strongholds but we're gonna go to the first stronghold because there's actually a building above that if we can just head off so here we are we are above the the portals just down there um, so is the stronghold with the end portal and this this is the build I want to show off um, now you will find this in another video uh, but this is an arena that I built um, it took me four months four months of first year uni to build this um, it's yeah, it was, it was incredible. All, all done on survival. You can just get the idea of the size of this place. Um, I did three, two tiers. I did two tiers of seating. And then I wanted to do a third tier. Uh, but I realised that um, I had no cobble left. So I went away and it took me like two weeks to get enough cobble to do the upper tier. Um, because I don't think I had a beacon back then. So that was crazy. That was crazy, crazy stuff. As you, as you saw though outside, the out exterior is pretty bad. It's just jungle logs and like the arches are just they don't go all the way around and there's not that much emphasis on them which is kind of bad in my opinion but yeah whatever it what's been done has been done uh, but yeah this is it in its full glory I like it when you do the increased FOV <laughs> just because it I know it makes the place seem so much bigger um, but yeah let's head down so this doubles up as a PvP arena, which you might be thinking single player, that's pretty daft. Uh, but it's also mob arena because uh, we've got four doors in the four corners. And this is where mobs swim up from a mob system. Now spiders don't swim up, obviously, but other mobs do. And other mobs spawn in the surface during the night time. And it could get pretty intense. I had some intense battles up here when I played, with, played this. Um, and this is like... There was gear here, so you could like just kind of prepare for it. It's pretty cool. This is the end portal room that I decorated kind of badly, but whatever. Uh, let's go to the end. So this is the spawning platform for the end. Um, there, I actually built two, two ender enders, because um, obviously I watched Etho, but I was behind on Etho's videos. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you remember back to my main world tour, I built the old Ender Ender. That is where that rail track goes. And here we are at the Ender Ender. This is the old, the older one. As you can see, we've got the rings there, the Enderman Fall, and uh, I can hit them. As you notice, there is iron bars in the top, and this is because in my main world, I, I realised that Enderman could teleport onto the roof here. And I decided to make a way so that I could hit them as well. And that's how I thought that up. I also saw someone else do it and I thought, hey, if they can do it, I can do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just got the basic setup here with um, chests for the ender pearls. And, and yeah, it's pretty pretty good. I just want to show this thing on the way back. Now, I promise you, 
while other people may have thought it up before me, I did not copy this off of anyone. I thought this up entirely on my own. As you can see, we've got a cactus, and we've got the minecart racing towards it. Um, and as you can see, uh, the cactus broke the minecart, and it fell into the hopper, and I was automatically uh, ejected from it. Now, obviously, other people thought that up before me. However, um, I was I remember being very thrilled that I thought that up, which implies that I didn't copy it from anyone, but I rather I, you know, came up with it on my own accord. So I'm pretty happy with that. And it brings my cart back to here. Now we're going to the Ender Ender V2 or whatever Etho calls it. Um, I did get a speed pot, as you can see in the background there. There is a dispenser. And what happens is when I fall down the water uh, to the water break, I hit a pressure plate and that gives me a splash pot, which is speed 2, and allows me to charge towards the Ender Ender, which is right there, with speed 2. Uh, so yeah. I remember once Leon asked if on public SMPs you would get like tons of these all over the place. Honestly, I'm not sure there's many people that would have the, you know, would be able to last the distance in building one of these, but basically this took me so long to build, but it was so worth it because I got so much stuff out of it, as you can tell. Um, yeah, this was, this was pretty good. I I saw Etho use TNT to kill the Enderman, and I thought that'd be a good idea, so mine's isn't quite as good as his, but I, I quite like it, so yeah. I should point out that a lot of the Ender, um, or the, what do you call them, the crystal pillars are missing, because I dug them out, or dug out the obsidian for the arena, because under the arena is just a layer of obsidian, in case a creeper explodes it doesn't destroy the ground as much as it would if there was no obsidian. Um, and there was a funny funny story, I was watching a film once and digging, and I once dug right through the floor and fell to my death, and I didn't notice until I turned back, it was like, oh, that's annoying. Um, also the portal to go back to the overworld is up there. I tried to kill the dragon right above the entry portal, because I had an idea of building something like this. It doesn't look that great, but, you know, I, I, whatever. Um, but the problem was I never got any of the XP, because it all fell into the void. <laughs> but what? The, there you go. With the good comes the bad. So we could now go to the other strongholds, but there's nothing different there. I just used different materials for decorating them. They don't look that great. Uh, instead, we're going to go this way, to the mines. Yeah, it, if you remember my um, build in James's Minecraft journal, uh, Mines of Moria, uh, this is where I, I first started this project in this world, and I'll just show you to the extent, the, the extent I got with it in here. So up here, as you can see, I've got a cool... Th this is actually a cool entrance. I really like this because there is a mountain biome and it's got, like, an overhang, a nice underground lake. It's really, really cool. And th these are the doors. Not quite as good as the ones in, that, in my current single player. Then you go down the stairs. Portal's there. There's a bedroom over there. Got a massive, massive room here. Um, I believe I was supposed to blow up TNT, but I never. Sh I can't remember if I got round to that or not. Oh, I dug them all out, but I never actually got round to laying the TNT. Oh, that's a shame. I didn't even. I didn't remember that. To me, ages to dig out those tunnels, and I completely just didn't try anything. Oh man, I'm kind of gutted now. I found that out. If you go along this corridor here from that big room, you end up here in another big room. And basically what this is, is a, yeah, it's the mines, or not the mines, the, it's the bridge again. Uh, now the bridge is actually wider, I think, than the one that I built in James's Minecraft Journal, but the broom's not as big, so I much prefer the one in James's Minecraft Journal. Uh, there was also a ravine down there, so that kind of helped with some of the digging. Um, and yeah, it took a while to dig this out. It's kind of a shame it's not come to anything, but... Well, whatever, it's, you know, you can't can't finish everything. I do have a lot of good resources here. Yeah, I got I got a lot of, a lot of stuff. There was one chest with tons of obsidian. Yeah, that, that's amazing. That's incredible to get that amount of obsidian. So we're now in the Snowy Mountains. The Mines of Moria are just over there. Um, base is somewhere over there, I think. And this is where I did my Ice Bucket Challenge. <laughs> when it was that time of the era. Um, I did my ice bucket challenge here. 
Oh, that must not have been pulled since I did it. That's incredible. This is like a historic moment. Yeah, I, I did this and put it on Facebook and people liked it, which I was quite happy about. I also put it up on YouTube. Um, I'm not sure if it's still up on YouTube, but uh, you can go search for my, my bucket challenge there. Um, it's not too funny. I'm sure other people did funnier Minecraft ones, but yep, this is where it all happened yeah, in my single player world of a few years ago. Uh, this takes us to the witch farm, I believe. Here we are at the witch farm. Uh, this was the first time I built this design. It doesn't work in 1.9 apparently, but I mean I won't be playing this world in 1.9. Uh, I dug out a huge area all around and that enables this to work really well, which I'm really happy about. Um, a few down here. I managed to get a lot of, a lot of resources out of it, which is you know, it's half the reason you build a witch farm. It's partly for the uh, the stuff the witches give you and partly for the stuff you can get by digging out the area, the perimeter. Uh, I don't think I ever optimised it. I think there was still a lot of caves to explore and light up, but I mean, uh, it worked. It worked pretty well, in my opinion. Okay, so now we're at Blaze Farm that I built. Uh, again, yes, you can guess which YouTuber I got it from. Um, this is a bit of a nether base for myself. Uh, I did attempt to build a wither skeleton farm as well. Um, although it's not, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not that good. Uh, I did half slab a huge area, which you can see down, well, down there, partially. You can see I half slabbed a lot of the fortress here and down there. I should mention that that spawner had been taken out, like, remember I said I came back to this world after a long period of time without playing it? But when I explored the nether, that one had gone, so I must have broken it, which I was really sad about. Um, but yeah, the blaze spawner is in there, and it's just similar to the ones that I've made uh, in other worlds, so there's no need to fully explain it. Where does that go? Oh, that goes to the roof of the nether, but I don't think there's anything up there. I honestly cannot think of anything that's up there. You know what, let's go check. Gives us nice views of the... Oh, look, yeah, there's a huge area half slabbed over there. That's where it must have been. I think I was going to build a gold farm or something like that. Oh, I can't get up anymore because the ladder's broken. Oh, yeah, I started to build a gold farm. It didn't really work. Okay, that's embarrassing. Let's um, let's get down. I actually remember I was building this area around about the time 1.6 came out. 1.5, 1.6 change. That was pretty. That was a pretty big moment because, of course, that gave us the new launcher. But yeah, I was I was in this area working, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, we've also got another portal here, which we shall head into. This is where our sheep farm is. As you can see, I've started lagging because there's quite a lot of entities in the area. Uh, if we head up here, we can see that is the sheep farm. There are sheep on every level. I think in order actually, so it goes from white to black. Uh, and as you can see, I built a nice wee house here. <gasps> Shock horror! It's not a box like what James normally builds. Yeah, well, I copied this from somewhere. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, it looks pretty cool. This is a wee island that I found and I thought it was pretty nice, so I was going to do some building here, which I guess I did to some extent, and yeah, obviously the wool is kept here. Alright, so we just made our way along this uh, yellow clay track place. Um, this, I believe, might be the longest uh, minecart track I've ever made in Minecraft. I think it goes for about 1500 blocks or so. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty long, and in fact it's so long I had to go and <laughs> uh, put something away. I, I did the IRL stuff because it's so long, but uh, it doesn't actually go to anywhere special. Well, I guess, I guess it does. This was the first Mesa biome that I ever found, as you can see, and I don't know why I'm showing this, because there's absolutely nothing here whatsoever that is interesting, but uh, yeah, this is where I got clay from. Uh, I think I actually got it from in there. As you can see, there's a huge, huge area that's just been carved out. Oh, there's still a beacon here. Haha, <laughs> nice. It'll probably have haste on it or nothing. Um, but yeah, I got a wee bit of a shack here. I've got these um, furnaces with nether brick in it, or whatever. And yeah, I got quite a bit of clay here while I was in my prime. Thought there would be more here. 
I must have taken it all. I guess I took all the hardened clay because that can be turned into any colour. Now we are at the end of another one of those rail tracks, the final one that we have got to go along, and we have arrived at the 1.7 base. So my thinking behind this was when 1.7 came out I wanted to seal the new biomes in that, and so what I did was I spawned a portal far away and I got transported here and I basically started afresh uh, with nothing, although my original resources were still at my other base. Hmm, must have forgotten to chop down that part of a tree. Um, but yeah, this was where I just basically started up. I built a base. It doesn't look amazing. In fact, it looks terrible. <laughs> but whatever. It, it, it That looks terrible. It's a mob farm up there. Um, it's it, it does well, the mob farm, it's just not amazingly efficient, which is really unfortunate. Um, and it was actually in this area that I discovered the mobs not spawning glitch because there was like a period of time where I was just playing and I just could not find any mobs and I was constantly wondering why and then I realised, oh wait, 1.7.4 gets rid of mobs, 1.7.2 <laughs> has mobs but 1.7.4 doesn't and that was really really annoying, I'm not even sure if it's fixed. Um, based on the fact it hasn't affected me, thankfully. What well, has affected me in Jim's Minecraft journal, it has affected me via the gold farm. Um, but I, that, that if I put my chunks up to 16, it seems to work fine. Um, if we just go in here, I can show you what's underground. We've got chests up there, and then down here we've got the, the mob farm. There's all the loot. Um... Actually, do we have chests up there? What even do we have up there? We've got a uh, we've got a wheat farm in there, which is main food source. Or oh, crumbs! Forgot there was a pressure plate there. Look at that. That's weird. Stupid glitched patch. Who plays in one point seven point two anyway? Yeah, it's fixed it. Um, let's go up here. I actually still play in one point seven point two when I do UHC in one point seven. Yeah, we got all the. Um, all the chests up here, uh, and yeah, this is the 1.7.2 base, or just 1.7 base, it's not the best, but uh, but whatever. I like the floor actually, this is a nice texture for the floor. That will do it for this video, thank you for watching. Um, I really wanted to implement something like this in um, James's Minecraft journal, and we might in future. Um, but yeah, this is the firework animations that was added in 1.4, pretty cool. Um, I basically just rigged the entire lake with uh, dispensers and that's what gives us this effect, it's really nice. Um, and yeah, so I just want to say thank you for watching, this was my, it's probably, I think my favourite world at the minute has, is, has to be James's Minecraft Journal. I think James's Minecraft Journal overtakes this world by quite a bit, but this is definitely my second favourite, much better than my main world. I did a lot of building, I don't actually remember if there was anything else, I got a feeling there was something over there, but... I've shown you all the main parts, I hope you enjoyed, uh, I hope you've seen improvements throughout it compared to my main world, and yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.